Hello, welcome back to the videos. Um, I was reading on the forum about pick noise, and that seems to be a really popular topic lately. And it's kind of a hard thing to describe with words when you're talking about pick angles, angle of attack. I mean, you know, we can talk about how to bend your picks and things, but uh, I thought maybe a, a video demonstration would be kind of useful to show you how different picking angles can affect the sound of your banjo. We can talk about you know bending your picks which is often mentioned on the hangout because there's a lot of merit in all of those approaches I guess you could say bending your picks can make a difference changing your angle of attack can make a difference but what I'll try to do in this video is to generalize some of these things because a lot of it is uh, going to be um, subjective as far as saying you know everybody must bend your picks like this well, that doesn't work for everybody because there are famous players who wear their picks completely different from another famous player. And you can listen to both those players and neither one of those guys get lots of pick noise. So then you could say, well, it must not be just the pick angle because if that player can play with his picks completely different than this guy, but they're both getting good tone and not a lot of pick noise, then it must be more technique. I think it's more what you get used to. So uh, what we'll try to do in the video is not to talk too much about you must do this or you must do that. I don't, I don't like to deal in absolutes. As you get to be a really good player and get to be uh, better with your left and right hand, you get more comfortable with uh, you know, how to adjust your picks, then you'll find something that works for you. But again, that won't work for everybody. So let's talk about something first which is uh, picks. Uh, you'll hear it mentioned a lot on the Hangout. I know guys like Dave Magrum are big advocates of bending your picks a certain way and uh, you know maybe even twisting your picks and that's all well and good if it works for you. If it doesn't work for you you might be one of these people that wears their picks with a less angle than others. But I'm gonna kinda show you like one, again this is just one example. I'm not trying to convince anybody to do this but this is just one example of how say a typical three finger player might adjust their picks. If you can see in the video I have just a little bit of the pick showing over the top of my fingernail. Uh, you can actually see how much angle they fit kind of the curvature of my fingers. And I don't know if you can see in the video or not, it's hard for the camera to focus like that, but the wear on my picks tends to be on one edge. I don't actually, I have never worn my picks directly on the center of the pick. It's always been a little bit off, off to one side slightly, but it is toward the edge of the pick. I'm not striking the string up in the middle of the blade or anything. So uh, again, you'll see other players, famous, well-known players that wear their picks with the blade sticking almost straight out. You'll see players wearing the blades of their picks where it looked like they rammed their fingers into a wall <laughs> with the picks on and the blade of the pick is just like at 90 degrees to their fingertip and then you'll see uh, probably a big majority of players like strokes players especially who wear their picks with you know curvature that follows kind of the end of your finger so what you need to do is experiment with different uh, pick shapes as far as how you bend them. Some players advocate twisting the pick a little bit so that they are more in line with the strings and if that works for you I say try it because I mean no more than the average set of picks cost. I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't start grinding on a fifty dollar set of uh, exotic picks like silver picks or anything but you can you can buy something like I've always used Dunlops through the years they're pretty inexpensive. Buy a few sets and experiment. Try bending the picks different ways Try twisting them, the blades, so that the blades at a slightly uh, cantered angle from, you know, straight on. And all those things will yield results. Now, if you're kind of a new player in this style of banjo, you've only been playing a couple years, uh, it will, it may not make that much of a difference to you as far as pick angle goes because you haven't adjusted the next thing that we need to talk about, which is your angle of attack, what I like to say, your ergonomics. So I'm going to pan the camera down to the banjo head and we'll try to zoom in here. Hopefully I can stay in the camera shot. Uh, and I'll use my uh, pan control on the camera. There we go. Uh, 
I think a lot of pick noise, other than getting used to how your picks are shaped, and yes, I do polish my picks occasionally, uh, you know, with uh, like really fine emery cloth and some polishing compound. But if you play a lot, your picks will stay, you know, pretty well polished from the from the picks contacting the strings. But now when we're talking about pick angle, angle of attack as far as your right hand goes, then we get into this ergonomic thing. Uh, typically what I try to do to lessen my pick noise, and this comes from me analyzing my own picking over almost 40 years of playing the banjo, I try to, through the years, watch my hand position. And when I hear pick noise, I'll try to identify what am I doing wrong with my right hand. Because my picks have stayed bent the same way pretty much for the last 35 years. So I know it's not pick angle, it's not the pick itself. Uh, and it's not the types of picks I use because I've always used the same thing. When I start hearing pick noise, scratchiness, or just you know a lot of excess pick metallic sounds, I'll start to analyze my right hand and I'll find that I allow my hand to fall out of proper alignment. What's proper alignment? Well, it's going to be different for each player. If you're a J.D. Crow guy, it may be this. But for me, I've always tried to keep the thumb ahead of my fingers because your thumb is opposable. Your thumbs naturally want to be out in front of your pick of your fingers. Your thumb doesn't want to be like this. You know, it's opposed. They're they're on opposite sides of the hand. They're made for gripping, not for playing the banjo. <laughs> so, uh, if here's what happens, ergonomically speaking, if you try to make your fingers and your thumb line up, if you're the average person, now unless you have a really short thumb, that won't be a problem. But most people have, you know, pretty good sized thumb as far as length goes. So if you try to physically make your thumb line up with your fingers, then you get this twisting motion. Something has to change in order to do that. And if you can see in the video, I'll now be playing more on the sides of my pick. And if you can hear it in the video, one of the most terrible sounds on the banjo is, for me, is not is not the clicking sound, it's the scraping sound. And especially if your strings get a little corrosion on them, which all strings will as you play, as the string ages, they'll build up accumulations of crud and, you know, uh, condensation and stuff. That edge of that pick will start grabbing that corrosion and makes this awful scratching sound. Not only will you get a little pick noise, but you'll get that scratching sound, which everybody hates, and you'll also get scratching sounds from your thumb pick. But for me, to avoid that scratching sound, I do not try to make my thumb line up with my fingers. And you can see in the video, hopefully, that when I try to make my thumb line up with my fingers, I have to rotate my wrist, I pull my thumb in, which forces my wrist to uh, pronate the other way. So what happens is, yeah, I can get my fingers lined up, but I'm right on the edges of the pick, which is not where I want to be. Okay, what's another symptom of pick noise? Not the scratching noise, but just the, uh, the I'll call it this, the slapping noise. I call it the slapping noise because I'll see a lot of players play with flyaway fingers. That's probably a term you've heard on the Hangout and other places. It's where your your fingers are going way up in the air and you're actually slapping down on the strings. So while you're playing, you're, you're coming from way outside in this big wide arc. That's generally speaking a no-no. Unless you have extremely long fingers and there's just some reason you, you have to play that way, it's a good idea to limit your range of motion. Try to stay as close to the strings you can so that your fingers are moving in this very small little arc. So you don't want to, you don't want this big exaggerated arc. You want to stay closer to the strings and limit. Not only does that give you improved tone, I think, and limit your pick noise, but it also makes you, uh, less prone to slowing down or, or if you want to invert that it means you can play faster because there's really nothing up here you want to pick so if you're trying to get any kind of speed out of say a roll pattern if you're, if you're playing a forward roll like this not only will you get a lot of pick noise 
but it's going to slow you down because you're wasting valuable time up in the air. Another uh, aspect is of pick noise from as far as your right hand ergonomics go is if you're digging in with the pick. If you're if you're coming at the string from say underneath, I'll let you listen to the difference in the tone. I'm going to try to keep the tips of my pick lined up with the strings so that I'm picking just on the leading edge. I'm not coming from underneath the string, which is kind of hard to describe with words, but listen to the difference of the tone of the banjo I'll play the way I normally do. Okay, now I'm going to start rotating my hand so that I'm actually coming from under the strings. I'm like my rotation is not over across the top of the string but it's coming from underneath it's almost like I'm trying to pluck the string from underneath and I don't know if the camera's microphone is picking this up or not but there, there's, there's more of a there's more of a metallic pick striking the string sound from that as opposed to coming from brushing across the top. So to kind of wrap this up, if you think about your ergonomics, oops, wrong way with the camera there, and your pick shape and your blades, you know, what it's going to take is for you to experiment with different pick angles, uh, polishing the pick or not. Uh, twisting the picks or not, finding the right pick for you that has the right kind of blade. Uh, same goes with your thumb pick, different thumb pick shapes as far as the blade goes, different materials will give you slightly different uh, changes in sound. But I think once you've identified a pick shape and size that works for you and the angle, most of the pick noise problem that you're going to encounter is going to be from your angle of attack. So kind of to wrap this up, try not to do anything in extremes as far as like no extreme finger motions. Don't get in these big wide arcs. Stay as close to the string as you can. Try not to pick underneath the strings. Try not to angle your pick, your uh, hand so that your picks are striking on the side of the string. But you want to stay close to the tip. You don't want to dig too far under the string, which will put you way up on the top of the blade. You need to stay on the front leading edge. It doesn't have to always be in the dead center, because if you can see from that video, my pick uh, wear area is to the left front edge for me. So yours might be on the right edge. You could be one of those dead center pickers. But try not to, try not to, you know, pick the string from underneath. You want a short arc, minimal amount of movement, stay on the leading edge of the pick, not on the sides, not way up on the band, and try to move across the front edge of the string as you pick so that you're not digging from underneath but coming right over the top of the string. And if you do those things and listen to yourself pick, start hearing pick noise, start looking at your right hand and start uh, doing those things that we talked about in this video. Change your hand position, try to get things where they feel natural and that you're striking the string in the optimal spot with the optimal amount of pressure. And you should notice over time that if you pay attention to these things and when you hit a stride in your playing where the pick noise is minimal and your tone is really good, start watching what you're doing and you'll probably notice that things are lining up in a way that gives you good tone and you should keep doing that. So don't get too hung up on pick shape, pick size, types of picks, types of pick material. Uh, all those things are, are part of the equation. I think it's probably more like a, to me, it's probably a 70-30 where it's 70% technique, 30% the types of picks and blades you have. So if you kind of work your equations out, you'll be able to get a little bit of the best of both worlds. So. Just listen to yourself, pick, watch what you're doing, and maybe some of these tips that I've given you in this video will help. Here's hoping, fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, so have a good time with your banjo and try to get the best tone you can. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks.